Yeah. Hi and welcome to Mark's Motivational Podcast for another Authors Tuesday. Uh, today I'm delighted to be joined by another great guest, Alan Scott from the UK. Um, he's, he's a children's author um, as well as a musician, he was telling me. So um, you're very welcome along today, Alan. Thanks a lot for joining me. It's, it's my pleasure. Thanks for uh, asking me to talk to you. Yeah, no, great, great stuff. Uh, we might just start the podcast off. If you want to just tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and um, you know the books you've written. Like you sent me your children's book that looks really, really cool, like your, your, your blob about the book. So do you want to just uh, tell the listeners, please? Yeah, uh, briefly, um, I was a school teacher most of my uh, life and um, a maths teacher. So the last thing on my mind was writing stories. Okay, that was the last thing on my mind. Um, but I took um, early retirement and then found I got time on my hands and looked around for things to do. So I did a little bit of uh, supply teaching, which was great because that got me back in with the kids. Um, but I found myself writing uh, quite by accident, little things that, um, that I'd done that at school, at home, that my grandsons were doing daily, little scrapes that they would get into. And then I would read them back to the boys at bedtime when they stayed with us. And uh, they seemed to enjoy the little stories and scrapes about themselves. I gave them new names. So um, my grandson, Barney, uh, he became Sylvester uh, after Sylvester Stallone. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the little one, um, whose name is Franklin, became uh, Tyrone after Tyrone in um, Coronation Street. Because oh, yeah. Emma loves yeah. Coronation Street. So yeah. that's where the names came from. And, and they just loved hearing me repeat some of the escapades that they did during the day when they were with us, weekends and holidays. Um, and then my daughter said, you know, why don't you just put all that together in a book? And I went, oh, get away with you. You know, I, I'm not an author. Uh, the last yeah. thing I felt like was being an author. Um, but slowly and surely, with more and more adding up, um, the book got thicker. The ideas got thicker. So I thought, well, you know, why not try it? So I decided to um, send some of it um, to some publishers. And a bit like J.K. Rowling, uh, not quite in her league, of course, but uh, I was turned down by about 55 publishing houses to start with. And then one publisher said, I like your stories. Uh, can, we, can we talk about them? And that was it. Um, I still didn't feel like an author at that stage, Mark. Got to be honest. Um, so uh, I hadn't had the book published at that stage. And... Uh, the, uh, the publisher gave me loads of help to improve it, edit the, uh, the stories, make them a bit more fascinating, funny, uh, a bit more descriptive. Uh, the publisher, Sean, was um, amazing. So that's yeah. really how it started with me taking up the, um, I suppose, the drum that my daughter and family had said, go on, see if you can get them published. And that was it. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. That's brilliant. That's a great story. Like, it just, it kind of is interesting what you're saying there. Like, you know, the more you try these places, you know, like, um, you know, not to give up, you know, just keep selling to the different publishers with, with that, you know? Yes. Yeah. I've yeah. got to be honest. Yeah, you have to stick at it. Because mm. in, in most cases, in my experience, the publishers don't have time to give the work that you send to them it's full credit. They're too busy. Yeah. They're probably getting 60 or 80 a day. Yeah, so yeah. you just got to keep going at them and saying, have you read it yet? Have you read it yet? Have you read it? And just keep going until eventually somebody says, okay, white flag, yeah, white flag. Uh, I'll yeah, read it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> great stuff. I know that, that's great news for you. I'm delighted for you. That's worked out like that. And uh, what's the name of your book, your books that you've you, you, you have out there Alan um, I, I know you sent me the, the first one there but how many have you got and what, what's the name of the books I've actually got um, three online at the moment and they're yeah. called Those Kids Next Door can, can you see can you yeah. see that 
It's not in yeah, reverse. No. Uh, those Kids Next Door, it's a series yeah. of four books. Uh, yeah. And it's about a family of five children and their ma. And uh, there's no dad. At the start of the story, we don't know why there's no dad in yeah. uh, there to keep the kids under control, I suppose, if you like. Um, yeah. And all of the books are called Those Kids Next Door with a separate mm. title. So the first one I wrote um, was The Battle Begins. So Those Kids Next right. Door, The Battle yeah. Begins. And the next one was called Over the Top. And I'm mm. now working on the third book. I haven't got a title for that yet. I'm waiting to see something leaps out at me uh, yeah. when it's kind of almost complete. Mm, yeah, they, they sound brilliant. Like, yeah, they sound, <clears throat> especially the first one. I, I read a little bit of what you sent me, the blurb you sent me. Uh, like, um, they're always getting into trouble. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 The two boys are, the, are really the ones who cause most of the problems because yeah. they're like, um, I've called them trouble magnets. Whatever they do, wherever they yeah. go, something goes wrong with them. Um, mm. And it's quite accidental. It's quite accidental. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. they offer to help Mr. Uh, Begley uh, carry his shopping in from the boot of his car. And yeah. in the boot of the car is a tin of paint. So yeah. they, they argue over who's going to carry this paint. And they have a little fight. And, of course, the paint goes up in the air, all over the car, all over the pavement all over Mr. Begley's feet, uh, a pure accident, an yeah. absolute pure accident, but that's what they do. They find trouble without even looking for it. Even when they're trying to help someone, it all yeah. goes, it all goes wrong. Yeah, it sounds absolutely brilliant. Like, I, I think I'll be getting a copy myself, like, because uh, my own kids have got a great laugh over that as well. Um, can, where can people get your book, Alan, as well? I know, is it on... Uh, it's, you say it's on, they're online, your books, yeah? Yeah, they are. They're, they're on Amazon, um, yeah. but also yeah. they're on my own website, which is Brilliant. obviously thosekidsnextdoor.com. Mm. Thosekidsnextdoor.com. Yeah. So if they go to my website, um, mm. they can see all the books there um, and order from there. Um, just a, a little aside here. This, this was my first book, and I wrote it, and we had it published. And you can yeah. see how thick it is, okay? Mm. And then I wrote my second book. Yeah. Okay, over the top. And mm. if I can show you that, you can see the difference in the thickness there. Yeah. And the reason for that, Mark, was because when I wrote this first one, I was mm. a beginner. I didn't even feel as though I was an author. Yeah. And I was yeah. learning the tricks of the trade from mm. the publisher. And yeah. I, I was quite embarrassed. I said, well, you know, look, this is so thin and this one's so thick. It's a bit embarrassing. I need yeah. to make the first book bigger and better. So yeah. that's exactly what I did. I took the first book and I wrote yeah. an extra seven chapters and a new ending. And that's the first book now, which is about the same right. thickness as the second book. So I now feel that I'm a proper author. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Yeah, and I, and I hope they're, they're doing really well for you um, as well, Alan. I hope they're, it's, yeah. it's working out pretty really well for you, you know? It does. Um, I, go, I go into schools as well because having been a school teacher, yeah. um, it's, it's easy for me to go into schools and feel relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, and I help children with at writing stories getting the best right. out of their ideas, that kind of thing. And of course, mm. when I'm in school as well, um, the obvious question is, can I buy one of your books? You know, mm. um, and the answer is yes. And when we go into schools, I always give special discounts for those children in that school. Right. Nice, yeah. So yeah. That's, that's a nice way of giving it back a little bit to, you know, to the schools. And the schools always get a copy of the books for their school library. Oh, so, um, yeah, so I enjoy going into schools. I enjoy meeting the children and uh, signing books. And yeah, mm. so it's, um, it's, I wouldn't say I've reached uh, David Walliams levels or J.K. Rowling levels yet yeah. by any stretch of the imagination. 
but um, yeah. we're doing all right. We're selling books. That's it. Yeah, no, it's great. Like, and like you say, <clears throat> it's good to to get, give something back as well. Like that. That's great. You know, to be, be able to do that for the skills as well. Like so. Well done with that, Alan. You know, brilliant. Yeah. And how did you find um, with COVID? Uh, did you find um, having the ideas a bit uh, more difficult, or how did you find um, writing writing through COVID? That's a, that's a great question. That because um, <coughs> excuse me, I I carried on writing, um, but my grandson, who was trying to become a, a videographer at the age of about eleven. Uh, said, why don't you read some of your stories um, yeah. and I'll video you and we'll put them online. And I said, well, that's not a bad idea. That seems quite good. We can put them online on YouTube and so on and so right. forth. Um, but he said, well, why don't you write something about COVID now? So I wrote a very short story uh, mm -hmm. about two weeks into lockdown. Okay. okay. Yeah. So... Yeah. Uh, and it was all about the family being in lockdown themselves and Ma trying to cope with these five children. One, the youngest is 17 months, little baby, and the oldest are the two twins who are 11. OK, so um, with the, the, the two boys who get into most trouble in between. So uh, I, I kind of thought about this and wrote this scenario with them being stuck at home and locked in. Uh, how could we get them into a lot of trouble doing that? Um, yeah. So I, I kind of thought, well, it might be an idea if Ma has been watching the telly like most other parents at that stage, apart from yeah. doing the, the usual emails to schools and back and forth about homework and marking homework. I thought she might get an idea to watch this um, uh, oh, gee, I've forgotten his, uh, I've forgotten his name. Uh, Joe, the the physical education fella on the telly. Okay, yeah. so I, yeah. thought, I think it's a great idea to get them all to do some physical exercise one mm -hmm. morning. So they turn the telly on, and of course she's got to get dressed up in a shell suit and you know and and, and socks, leggings, and all that sort of stuff. So that embarrasses them badly. Um, but without spoiling it, lots and lots of things go wrong during the actual 20 minutes that Joe is doing his physical fitness, okay? Um, seriously, yeah. go wrong. You know, almost ends up in a fight between the two lads and, and the, the elder sister and the elder brother end up having a fight because he pushes her over while she's doing some bending and press-ups and stuff. So, yeah. I <laughs> all the while to get a few laughs. So that lasts about seven minutes, I think. So we recorded that and uh, I really enjoyed it. My grandson kind of got the best out of me and he said, no, granddad, whatever you do, don't read it. You've got to act it. You know, you've got yeah. to go, oh, and get all this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to do. Um, and those are, those are online. I'm quite pleased with those in many ways. Um, and at the same time, the publisher said, uh, we would like, as a publisher, to do something for the NHS. If you remember, the NHS was going through terrible times at that <clears> stage. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we were all standing outside on the Thursday night. We were all clapping our hands. Do you remember? Applause and all that. He said, well, let's produce a book um, at no cost, uh, to, uh, apart from printing costs. And let's sell it, and every penny goes to the NHS. Oh, so he said. Uh, so he asked about eight or ten of us authors with the company to write a story. Now, the one I wrote was a sci-fi story, and I'd never ever written anything mm. sci-fi before. Um, but I came up with this story about aliens trying to uh, attack Earth from outer space and zap yeah. everybody up into the spaceship and then they yeah. were going to send the spaceship off out into outer space and they themselves were going to come down and overtake the world mm. apart from the fact that lucy wilson um was down here living in wales and very cunning and able to stop them with her special powers so 
<laughs> yeah, we, yeah. We, 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 I don't remember the final figure, but we raised a lot of money for the NHS from that book, which is still online. And um, the publisher is Candy Jar Limited. They're in Cardiff. So if anybody would like to read any Lucy Wilson stories, um, Candy Jar Limited is the is the publishing company. Great stuff, because um, if you if you want to just share the links as well, um, if you want to email them, anything you want me to promote, I can put them in the show notes um, for people to check out your books and um, as well as that great thing that the publishing company did for the, for NHS in in the UK. So that, that's brilliant. Um, thanks for that, Alan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can I yeah. can do that for you, no problem. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant. And I suppose as well, Alan, can, you know, well done. Really, really, really brilliant stuff. Um, your stories look sound great. I'd, I'm looking forward to reading that, that one myself about the, the aliens. <laughs> that sounds, uh, I love so, I, I'm a big fan of sci-fi as well. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 great stuff. So I suppose that's a great way to ask you as well. Um, what's your, your favourite books to read? Like, and I suppose what, what books inspired you the most, Alan? Um, if you could think of a few. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a question I get regularly, especially when I go into yeah. schools. Um, mm. Believe it or not, it was Enid Blyton. Enid Blyton, I grew up with yeah. the Famous Five and the Secret Seven, yeah. and I only found out about two months ago that the Secret Seven is still up there in the number one yeah. slot. It's incredible right. that Enid Blyton has lasted all these yeah. years. So Enid Blyton, yes, definitely. And then when I kind of got to top end of junior school, uh, I learned about um, Biggles, Captain John's and the Biggles books, yeah. which were for me, fabulous, fabulous books. Um, mm. And then I suppose um, Roald Dahl has figured mm. greatly, not only for me to read his stories, because I think um, as an adult, his stories stack up beautifully, uh, mm. as well as for children. Um, yeah. And of course, I would read lots of those when I was in school, in primary school, and we'd have Friday afternoon, we'd have 15 minutes at the end of the day, and we'd have story yeah. time. And Roald Dahl was always in there at some point. Yeah, so that, oh yeah. This is on me. Uh, David Williams, of course, recently, because he mm. creates real excitement in his stories. Oh, absolutely. Great. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. That's a great list. Um, Alan, great list. <laughs> brilliant stuff. And you as well as, as um, being a bit uh, loving playing music. Um, what's your favourite kind of uh, music to listen to and to relax to yourself? And one other question, if that's OK, that might tie in well with that question. Do you ever listen to music when you write? Because I've had a few people on the podcast would, would listen to music, but not with lyrics, but kind of... Um, you know, melodies or yes. classical music? Yeah, the um, <clears throat> I've got to be honest, I like all kinds of music from yeah. folk music to yeah. Irish music, Scottish, um, yeah. traditional, uh, um, because they're playing in a German umpa band, we do German traditional music as well. But we also do rock and roll from everything from Oasis to the Wurzels. Brilliant. You know, a complete... <laughs> yeah. But when I'm writing, I either prefer total silence or mm. something really soft, classical music. Mm. Again, with, as you said, with no lyrics, because you have to think yeah. about lyrics. But if I yeah, have yeah. got some nice, soft, classical music going on, um, that's it's very soothing and creates mm. a nice ambience to write. Yeah, yeah, it does. It really does, because... I've only started to do, do that myself recently uh, to listen to like just any kind of music. You find yourself in into a zone. Like, if you know, did you, do you yeah. find that as well? And you kind of find yourself getting into a writer zone before you know, you have a, a couple of pages written, you know? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yes absolutely the same. Uh, when, when I yeah. start uh, to write, I find once I start, <coughs> the, it just flows out. Um, mm. the ideas flow. I'm not saying they're complete and finished at that stage, but yeah. getting it all down, uh, I, I must admit, when, going back about five or six years, I bought an iPad and I found that I could speak to the iPad and it recorded and printed Great, it yeah. up what I said. So I spent a lot of time in the early days doing that. 
uh, speaking into the iPad, letting that do the printing for me because it was faster than me typing uh, on the mm. keyboard here. So, uh, yeah, I, I used to use that. But nowadays I use the keyboard more because I can chop and change as I go mm. along. Yeah. Well, that's a re that's really interesting, <laughs> Alan, because, yeah, I've never I've never thought that before, because a lot of people, you know, when they have ideas, they might just say it into their phone or something like that. But that's that's a really that's really good for anybody that's listening that's um, just got interest in writing. So thanks very much for that. that. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. That works as well. And I use the phone as well for ideas. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't use the back of cigarette packets because I don't smoke, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mats sometimes come in very handy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I could be in a restaurant and something happens, and you think that's a good idea. And I'll make a quick mm. note of it. Uh, maybe great that'll stuff. come out later. Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant! That's great. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah. As well as that, can I just ask you? Do you have a kind of a, a strategy with your writing as well? Like, would you kind of um go with the flow with it, or would you write a certain amount of words a day, or what way do you work that, Alan? Yeah, that's a good question. I've never been able to work a certain number of words a day. I'd feel that that would be a job. For me, mm -hmm. that would be a yeah. job. So yeah. I write when my brain says, ah, quick, get this down. Start mm -hmm. writing. So then I, I'm, I'm at the computer, which is what the one I'm looking at now. Um, and I just start. And usually within 10, 15 minutes, I'm in the zone, as you mentioned, in the zone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the ideas are coming out fast and furious. So mm -hmm. I just let them come out. And then I, once it's all down, I'll save it, obviously. Leave it for 48 hours, then go back and reread it. So mm -hmm. I'm reading it fresh. Um, and that way, I, it, it jumps out at me if it's right or wrong immediately. Yeah, Whereas if yeah. I were to reread it back as soon as I've written it, it, it doesn't have that same effect. I need to leave it and go back to it and then edit and uh, improve and change and so on mm. and so forth. Um, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a great strategy, Alan. That, that's really, really good um, because that way you're, you're not like making mm. a rash decision. You're, you're leaving it to boil for a while and then, then yeah. check it out later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah brilliant. Uh, leave it to boil for yeah. a while. That's great. That is. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Great stuff, yeah. But uh, no, this has been this has been brilliant talking to you, Alan. And I, I actually love the way um you mentioned earlier where you started off with your first book, and then you you, you change it with the third book. I just thought that's that's a really good as a first time author myself. Like I've I've written a, a small kind of small uh, children's book that I kind of um I've only just published it. It's out there, and I'm really happy with it. But um, what I've done is I kind of um. It was all oh, stories I made up for the children through the years, going to yes. bed at night, yes. and I got them together in a, in a short book, a, a small book. But it's kind of food for thought for me and anybody that's listening uh, to kind of think of, you know, it's not the finished product. You can always go back and make yes. it, yeah, make it yeah. different. Like that's, that's brilliant. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Did, did you find that the best ideas were the ones where you'd actually experienced what you're writing about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, mean, I, can give, I can give you a classic one. This is this appeared in the book. Um, are, we, are we okay for time? Yeah, yeah, fine. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, uh, uh, my two grandsons, um, were getting ready for school one day. Okay. Yeah. They got out of bed. Their bunk beds. They'd taken off their pajamas and they were wrestling like two, you know, a four-year-old and an eight-year-old usually do. So my yeah. daughter, <laughs> their mom, went in and went, Ah, what's going on here? Get your yep. pants on, hurry up, you'll be late to school. Right? Yep, Absolutely yep. true story. So um, she went back about five minutes later thinking, that's a bit quiet now, what's going on in there? Mm. So she went <laughs> back in and the two lads were standing by their bunks, saluting like this. They were completely starkers, but their underpants were on their heads. <laughs> and they... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And they said, well, you said we've got to put our underpants on, but you didn't tell us where to put them. So when they told me about that, that's got to go into the book. So it's in, it's in the, yeah, the next book. So oh, fair play. Little things like that, you know, uh, mm. those life experiences are oh, easy. Yeah. yeah. Well, like it's what, the same as metaphors, Alan, you know, um, yes. like 
we we always use metaphors like you know I, I do have people on that kind of coach people and all that kind of stuff on, on a tourist day but like you know we're studying this stuff as well we all use metaphors but like like you say the life experience are always the best metaphors to use to help people yes. they, they, they are for me certainly yeah, yeah. i've got to be honest yeah yeah yeah, yeah. great stuff uh, yeah mm. No, it's I great. Think, uh, listen, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I was gonna say, I think if you can see the funny side of something, it's a yeah. bit easier to write about it and make yeah. it sound funny. Because I don't know whether you realize that, or you found out, but writing something that's funny to make it sound funny is not particularly easy. Yeah. <laughs> make it actually sound funny. You've got to give a much more visual description. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's absolutely great. I really appreciate you coming on, Alan. And um, as I say, I wish you all the success going forward with your books as well. They sound brilliant. You have another customer here as well. So <laughs> thanks so much. Yeah. Well, um, thank you so, very much. Yeah, no, yeah. thanks, Alan. Yeah, so uh, we'll probably have to get you, we'll have to get you back on to do a Music Sunday with, with us sometime as well to kind of maybe give us a tune or, you know, talk about your music as well, because that sounds really interesting. That's, yeah, that would be fun. I would enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah, great. Alan. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. So that was Alan Scott, everybody. Uh, thanks a million, Alan, for joining me tonight on Arthur's Tuesday. Um, so the best of luck again with all your going forward with your books and your stories. They sound great. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for listening again to Mark's Motivational Podcast, Arthur's Tuesday episode. Join us again for Thursday, where we get another guest on. Take care. Thanks, Alan. Take care. My pleasure. Bye now. Cheers. Take care, Bobby. Thanks a million for tuning in today's podcast, Mark's Motivational Podcast. Um, so I just want to advertise my new book. It's called Adventures of Larry Lampos and Friends. It's a book I wrote for my own children, bedtime stories, collection of bedtime stories, and to some uh, really funny characters in it that my kids love, so I'm sure your children will like as well. Um, like th there's uh, Larry Lampos, there's Mr. Shopper, there's like the name but a few. So I'd really appreciate it if you could buy this book and it's available on Amazon and if you want our book depository. So it's on Amazon UK and various Amazon sites throughout the world. So um, I really appreciate it. Then if you want, if you're in Ireland and you want to buy it off me, just contact me um, by email. It's marklestrange11 at hotmail.com. That's M-A-R-K-L-E-S-T or A-N-G-E, 11 at hotmail.com. So thanks a million, folks, for your continued support on the podcast. Really uh, appreciate it. So listen, have a great week. And thanks for tuning in. Take care.